Hi everyone, it's Agnes and welcome to the end of the year for 2020. Hamza has come to join me again and we have got a few things we're going to discuss with you today. Hamza I have interviewed before. Welcome Hamza. Hi Agnes, so good to be here again. I love these uh, interviews and follow-up conversations. I think it's always yeah. good to look back and you, you know, reflect and share your learnings. Yeah, for sure. And you sent me a lovely message that inspired this interview where you had done certain things coming into the end of the year and with the new year 2021 coming in do you want to share those things? Because I thought they were really brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, as uh, I think 2020 is coming to an end, um, it's, it's great to look back uh, and reflect on uh, what this year brought, uh, what it has taught me. And I would say 2020 has been, uh, I think, a turning point uh, for me because this is when I uh, came out of a very abusive uh, relationship of three years with a narcissist. And this is the year I found uh, or discovered self-love. This is the year I discovered myself. In fact, recovered myself out of, I call it risen from the ashes because uh, I call that relationship my death. And it's like, I have done so much work over the past eight months uh, and I've created, I, I mean, I'm still doing it, but I think I've created a new version of myself. And when I look back, there's just, I see incredible learning and growth. Wonderful. Do you, um, well, firstly, your birthday is on the 25th of December and yeah. you just celebrated your birthday and part of your birthday celebration was a just a real, um, what's the word? A real, just just doing something that you normally wouldn't have done and really in, enjoying something within the restrictions of COVID. So yeah, yeah. So about my birthday, I would say um, this birthday has been very different because I mean, my past three birthdays were with my uh, ex. So every time, I mean, those of us who are in relationships, whenever we have such events, birthdays or anniversaries, we always, you know, in this expectation or getting mode, oh, what is my partner doing for my birthday, you know, and we just generate this expectation and we just project that uh, onto our partners. So my learning from self-love has been that you are, you know, responsible uh, for your happiness and you are your own source of love and happiness. So I was like, why not throw uh, myself a big birthday party and why let anybody else you know do that for me that has been the biggest learning that it is my job to make myself happy and I don't have to rely on anyone else so that was the motivation uh, behind uh, throwing I, I threw a big party and I, it was just fantastic I had friends over I got so much love uh, on that day and I don't regret it because I feel even if you are in very good, healthy relationships, these are the events you should do for yourself and not expect your uh, partners to do it for you. Yeah, yeah. I think um, whether you're single or in a relationship, that's really good advice because then you bring, well, it's like you, you let your partner off the hook if you've got one. And exactly. you let your you let your friends and family off the hook that they should be doing something for you, or you, you just go, what can I give to them rather than what can they do for me? It's um, yeah. I think once not, you get this realization that it is your job to make yourself happy, and you know it just it's liberating. Uh, yeah, it liberates you from this need of getting what you want from others. Yeah, And it's not easy. I mean, uh, but uh, when we, I think, get to that point, that is when we start creating and attracting mm. good, solid relationships. Yeah, I agree. Relationship so, with self, then relationship yeah. with others. Yeah. Exactly. So one of the things uh, I did, so now obviously on my last birthday, uh, at midnight, my ex called me up. And for the last three birthdays, he would be the first to give me a call and wish me birthday. So I was 
and this time i knew that i would not be getting a call because he is no more so i was kind of anxious and i did not want to have a down moment but you know down moment uh, or a low moment on my birthday so instead of getting bogged down in that past energy i decided i thought of an exercise i got a sky lantern and i lit it up and i just released it right at 12 midnight when my birthday started and as i released um, the lantern i closed my eyes and i just said to myself that you know here's i i'm just letting go of uh, my past energy i'm just letting go of him and i'm letting go of the old version of me that created uh, that situation so that mm-hmm. was one exercise that i think did and i think that made me feel really 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 light and better throughout the day the next day. yeah where did you buy that lantern i think they they very easily available here so i just ordered online uh, ah i've never exercise. heard of that until you told me about it the other day i was yeah, like I wow yeah yeah the the paper lanterns so you, you just burn them and then they just fly like <laughs> yeah so next day every every time i had a thought about like my past or past 3 years i just reminded myself i thought of the lantern it's gone it's gone you know that old version yeah. of me gone i cannot think about it now it's gone gone with the wind yeah yeah that's lovely what a great completion ritual yeah it's a ritual definitely so you know when you do these um uh, tran- marking uh, rituals where you mark a certain point in your life with some um uh, ritual so it's it's a great exercise mm. and cultures have such i think rituals where they mark important events in their life yeah no oh, it's lovely and you said to me too that you did something else which i thought was really lovely as well uh which one exactly you can't uh... the clearing the clearing out of stuff there was some clearing out getting rid of physical stuff yeah 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 so exactly so i had obviously all the gifts and letters i still had them uh, from my ex and i had kept them locked i did not have the guts to go and you know open them i mean they were like something which is buried in my room i don't open them ever so i was like now it's my birthday and now that i've chosen to let go of my past and my you know old version this is the time to get rid of it yeah so i just um, opened all of got them out and then i lit them up and burned them down and the ashes i just put them in the water and flushed it down mm. and while i was doing it while i was doing it i just kept reciting ho pono pono oh nice how did you feel after you got rid of it like it was all done how did you feel after that i think i felt very liberated yeah i mean it's yeah. it's not, i i i would say it's not easy because i think i had uh, gotten quite a mixed bag of emotions going on at that time yeah but then i was very very sure about what i was doing and was yeah. i had to do it yeah and this is the time you know when you finally mm. just let go of it yeah you know I just, i just had a feeling I, i i mean i don't know i just had a feeling that my partner will i don't know maybe he's also he will feel this energy right now i was just mm. a feeling yeah 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 you know it seems like just from working with people talking to friends it seems like this year because we've been under a lot of restrictions it's been a year to complete let go of finish it's been a real cleaning up and tidying up loose ends yeah definitely definitely i mean for me this this is the year when my spiritual awakening began i mean i will always yeah. remember and covid became the force i mean it became uh, the reason for my breakup so for me yeah. it's been a blessing in disguise and i yeah. think 2021 goes down in my uh, diary as as the year that changed things uh for good for me. Yeah. I mean turning around. Yeah, for sure. And I think you never forget that year where you start all this stuff like you and I were talking about before we started recording. Yeah. It's like the year that my friend gave me my first book 
that then it took my life took a total left turn and it's I've never gone back I've never gone back it's been continually learning new and new things from that first book and yeah I mean I think the biggest yeah. is that when I now look back with all the knowledge that I have gathered uh, and all the learning in the past eight months everything just falls into place and mm. everything now it just makes sense you know and now I understand now I know why what happened why it happened so yeah. uh, it's uh, I, I want to quote here uh, Wayne Dyer who said something very uh, I think interesting he says that no matter how much I protest I'm totally responsible for everything that happened you know so mm. That is such uh, an empowering line. I think it's made for me for my situation because yeah. no matter how much I resent him, uh, how mm. much I resent my past, it was me that, that created or contributed to it in a number of yeah. ways. It was my thoughts and beliefs uh, at that time yeah. about myself yeah. uh, that attracted that energy. So yeah. when I when I uh, think of him now, I I don't know if I blame him. I mean. Because I see my reflection, you know, the, mm. the concept them being us pushed out. So mm. I feel like it was the incarnation of me uh, who's gone, who's, which I've dissolved. And it no longer holds because I have myself dissolved that version. Yeah, yeah. And if he comes and- back, he's, he's just like somebody who does not really match my energy anymore. yeah. Yeah, it's like once your self-love becomes really solid uh, as a foundation of who you are and you work on it every day and you really start to see the changes in your relationships with everybody because you're no longer operating in the same way. And it changes relationships on a big scale for the better for you, for sure. Definitely. I mean, this, this I personally experienced when you are in this state of feeling uh, loved and wanted, it's not just your partner. I think you just start attracting very different energy from everything around you. Yeah. And I, I, I want to look back at my birthday. I mean, because I did a lot of meditation um, the whole day. I mean, I started my day with affirmations and meditation. I even did scripting. I, I just, everybody was like, you're glowing today. You know, it's just, you're radiating. <laughs> Uh, there's something different about you so it just I think it's it just comes out of you and it, it's visible to people it's it's yeah. the same that you, and that you project and you get the yeah. same energy back from the universe mm. that's so true it's so true it is it's like you don't you're not trying to get reassurance you well you, you stop the trying to get anything and you are then giving something to the spaces you move around in with whoever's there so yeah, it's, it's very, I think it's very few people actually have got deep, good self-love and they take that and give it to people wherever they go. In my experience, yeah. it's still, even in my own life, I've got some, I've got one, two, three people, four people in my life that have got good self-love that I can say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still on the low end, you know, it's still yeah. not the majority. And yeah. um it's wonderful when you do find people that are doing it like you are. It, it's such a joy to be around and you laugh a lot more and you relax a lot more and you let go yeah. a lot more. It's yeah. brilliant. I think what's, what's really uh, interesting here is how you actually perceive the concept of self-love. I think even my definition of self-love has changed, I think, over the past eight months. So initially I thought self-love was self-care. Um, yeah. then self-love is telling yourself that you're loved and you want it but now I think self-love has dimensions yeah. and um, self-love for me is uh, becoming a version of yourself who's uh, very confident and secure number one yeah and the second dimension uh, to self-love is uh, I think which is the most empowering one and the most difficult one is showing up for yourself start Mm. uh, starting to give yourself what you want from others and the ability to meet your needs and be self-sufficient I think Mm. that part when we hit that part that is we uh, actually uh, see the change yeah 
for sure. And self-love can be, yes, the self-care component. It can be you give yourself what you would like, what you would have liked others to give in the past. But I think I'm seeing self-love now as saying no to something I don't want to do. It's um, turn, switching off my phone at 6 p.m. and not answering any more messages. Yeah. It's yeah. laying in bed till 11 a.m. in the morning because I can and I feel like it. And you know what? Why not? That self-love on. So different things you see, like you say, deeper levels of how to add to your self-love as yeah. you become yeah. Another, another layer I would say is uh, setting boundaries, you know, uh, uh, of what you're going to accept and what you're not going to accept and raising your standard. That is also self yeah. So when I look back at my relationship, there were so many instances. If I mm. had the sense of I had today, I would have backed out of that relationship just right away, you know. They mm. were instances I was humiliated and, you know, I mean, so what I call I call it hell no approach. I'm hell no. I'm not going to get yeah. that treatment. I'm not going to allow you to treat me in that way. That is self love, which you yeah. need to which you need to I think uh, set out and make it clear to your partner. I think the very very first uh, yeah. day. Yeah, for so sure. If you, if you if you if you're particular about time, and the other person is just not respecting that, I think that is when you need to communicate it. Uh, yeah that's that love yeah for sure for sure it's uh it's a really multi-leveled layered journey the self-love one isn't it like you see more and more where you haven't loved yourself and where you can improve it, it's like i find even you know decades later from learning self-love from louise hay when i was 17 I yeah. like I was hearing the words. I had no self love then. I didn't even know what she was talking about. Yeah. Like I just yeah. didn't. And it's like you spend your whole life, I think, improving, getting better at, maintaining. Like this is another one I've noticed lately. When people get to the end of the year, and this includes me, you'd be exhausted. Yeah. That's not self love. That's you not managing yourself properly. So, I, in the last few years, it's like once that really busy period hits, I go, right, I'm, I'm looking at where am I going to give my time and how much time am I going to give to things because I'm going to hit the end of the year relaxed, in balance, at peace and in a good mental and emotional state of mind. I'm not going to push myself to exhaustion anymore because if I am, I'm yeah. not listening to what I need. Exhaustion tells you, you are not managing your self-love. Definitely. I think it's, it's about prioritizing yourself and putting yourself first. And it may sometimes, uh, I think, come off as selfish, but yeah, um, I think we need to start by setting boundaries, yeah. respecting ourselves. For sure. You know, another thing I did for self-love in the last month, I have removed myself from LinkedIn, Instagram and Facebook. I do yeah. not want to be on platforms anymore because it takes time. It doesn't really, uh, I find, nurture what I would like to do. So I've now got an extra 120 hours a year because I was probably doing about 10 hours a month on those platforms. I've now recovered 120 hours a year by yeah. removing myself from discussing things with people that I'm never going to see that I don't really know Yes, I mean, if you want to communicate with people from school or all of that, but I think those people I will still communicate with on WhatsApp or whatever. Yeah. So I've recovered an extra 120 hours of my life back just by I, making that decision. There's so much time that uh, goes into uh, these apps, which we're not just mindful of. Yeah. And also, now when I look at these apps, I think after having learned about self love, these apps actually are doing you know having the opposite effect on you because with instagram what everybody is trying everybody's mm. trying to get from the instagram you know attention validation yep. from people yeah so i have i also have this addiction and i still have it i'm going to say it and i'm trying to cut it down and this is next this is i would say something that i want to manage yeah for 2021 that reduce my reliance and addiction on instagram whenever yeah. i put a post down there i'm just concerned with oh my god how many likes i've got so it's like I'm letting likes decide yeah. how wanted 
or how loud. Yeah. 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 And that is something is so toxic, and that is something mm. that we need to eliminate. Yeah, and I think you know, like I did that. I was on those things a lot, um, and then I, I just thought. I actually got to the point where I was seeing some of my friends posting things and I thought, God, I actually don't want to know this part of you. You're, you're, you're really attention seeking. You really need approval from everybody. And I thought, I don't want to see that part of my friends because it's making me not like them as much. So I thought if I get off there, I won't see that. And then I can just enjoy them in person. But I thought I have to look at why have I been on there and you know, when I saw those two um, documentaries on Netflix, The Social Dilemma and uh, The Great Hack, it just made the decision for you. Yeah. Final for me. That was, I was already kind of pulling out slowly and getting less and less. Cause I think you sometimes you do things in stages, you, you reduce like what you say you're doing. And then eventually it mm. just naturally um, kind of happens. I personally don't like attention these days I don't like people knowing what I'm doing I like to have a private life that's private between me and the people that I'm doing it with um I like being anonymous I mean I am on YouTube so I'm not going to be anonymous but I've I've reduced it down to I'm on one platform and that's YouTube um YouTube um I've still got Pinterest um Pinterest is I think the least um uh, look at me platform I think that I've used and uh, yeah. I'm going to look at whether I actually get rid of that as well in the next month or so I'm going to consider do I really even want to be on that so yeah I mean, it's, you, it's understandable because you know it's it's part of your business and you have to use these platforms uh, for you a for little bit do. yeah I need yeah. to be on yeah. something I yeah. mean my business you know um the Instagram was working quite well so it's probably affected the business negatively but yeah. I thought my personal integrity is more important than that. Yeah. So and it takes a lot of it takes a lot of I think self love to get to that stage. A lot it of it does. Uh, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Because I like don't... I'm trying. I'm, I'm. I'm not really. I've not been very successful uh, with yeah. reducing my addiction. Uh, Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. But that's something I. I mean, I've actually got in my mind, and hopefully, um, I'll get rid of it. Yeah. But I think, Hamza, I think reducing it, you know, like I know when I finally switched it off, my whole body just went, oh, yeah, because I was going on there and, and just going, what am I doing on here? This, I'm, I, I don't want to see what this person's doing. I'm not interested in this person having lunch somewhere. They've yeah. bought a chocolate bar and they photographed it. I, I really, I, Honestly, I don't want to be part of this. I don't want to be that self-centered that that's what I'm doing. So yeah. if I'm not doing it, but then I'm going and looking at other people doing it, I don't even want to be looking at that. I don't want to spend 120 hours a year doing that anymore. And But it was gradual. It was a gradual progression. And uh, yeah. honestly, I've been reading more. I've been doing yoga. I've been meditating. I've been learning a course about something I've wanted to learn about for a while. So it's like that 120 hours is going to those things now. A better uh, being put to a better use. Yeah, yeah for sure so you had a couple of things you wanted to bring up other things that you'd written down what else did you yeah. want to share yeah. so i'd like two three reflections back from my relationship um, yeah i mean i did not have this kind of learning when we had our last conversation so if when i look back i think um, the parts of me which uh, i see created certain uh, situations in my relationship so throughout uh, three years, I was in, I was saturated in this state of uh, second best. I am not loved and I'm not wanted. So let's just start with the uh, second best thing, how it affected my relationship. So when I uh, met my ex, he was coming from a very intense relationship from, with another narcissist. And he had a very, very, very abusive relationship. So now from day one, one, I was very insecure about his past. And I, I mean, because he had a very strong past that automatically made me insecure. And it strengthened my belief as second best, you know, oh, he's not over, he's not over his ex, I'm not good enough. He's not over his ex, I'm not good enough. Yeah. And it was so dominant that that part 
became so dominant that it continually affected, uh, I think, our dynamics. And something happened, which is like, like, you know, you talk about how the outer is a photocopy of your inner. Um, I'll quote a very, very interesting uh, incident that happened, which was actually a photocopy of my inner insecurities. So I basically, it was his birthday. And I remember I flew him to a very, very lavish uh, holiday uh, away from where we live. Uh, a five-star package. We were, and the part of the reason I did it was obviously out of love and because it was his birthday gift from me. But also part of the motivation behind that gift or uh, me acting that way in an overly giving way was because I was insecure of his past, you know. And the yeah. idea was that I would set the bar so high and I will do things that he will actually forget or finally he would, you know, uh, get over his ex. That was the thinking part of me that created uh, that situation. So we flew to um, this country and we were having the time of our life and you won't believe what happened. So on his birthday, away, we, we are at a mall just walking and we see a guy walking right in front of us and that's his ex oh i mean can you believe it wow Away from it, the reason we went was to avoid to escape that yeah. right that day that country that <laughs> hour that place i mean the universe could not have found a better timing yeah so that was like a real photocopy here you go Hamza. this is in your face you know, you, you're trying to escape it. This is no matter where you go. This yeah. you're going to it because it's, it's living in you. That monster, that Frankenstein was living inside me. Yeah. Wow. So that is one thing I wanted to talk about because this, I, I never looked at it. Uh, now I know why it happened. Uh, when I look uh, back at that. And when I told my friends, everybody was like, this is ridiculous. You know, this <laughs> cannot be happening. <laughs> Everybody was like, this is not real because it is so mysterious. Yes. It is just weird, you know, that particular hour, that but I could have been, we could have been at a different place. We could have been, mm. you know, at a hotel, but it had to happen. Yeah. So, so I think our insecurities and our beliefs as second best, they, they yeah. definitely, uh, they manifest into certain situations. Yes. So we really need to watch uh, our internal uh, states and we really need to fix that. Mm. Uh, second uh, point that I had uh, uh, written down is throughout my relationship, I mean, I did not have self-love at all. I did not know how to be on my own and still be happy, still be content. Now, because I didn't have self-love at all, I had made him my source of um, happiness, my source of peace, my source of stability, and my source of security. It was like the center of my world. My entire day revolved around him. When he's going to wake up, and am I going to, because it was long distance, and there was a time difference as well. He used to work night shifts, and I used to work day shifts. So, I mean, there was a lot of um, added distance because of time as well. So I would just wake up and just wait for him to wake up, you know, and all my day would revolve around and around. I just did not know how to be on my own for a day. I just could not be on my own for a day. And the result of that was the more I tried to get from him, I mean, that energy, that attention, uh, that love, the more he made me crave. Now, I mean, right, I understand he was a narcissist, so he he had his ways of torturing and, you know, um, that was also what he was like. But also, when I look at myself, I was also in that energy uh, of receiving that kind of a treatment, you know, mm. if he's giving silent treatment. I'm the one who's taking that silent treatment. If he's mm. gaslighting me, I'm the one who's taking that sort of abuse, you know. And I, I remember, I mean, he wouldn't, he, he used to have this scarcity mindset 
which these people use. It's called crumbing as well. So they just throw crumbs, you know, just so you crave more and more for their time. You crave more and more for their presence. He mm. would come like one mm. night in 30 days, then leave me 29 days craving for him, you know. Yeah. And even with sex, he wouldn't give me enough. And that yeah. would leave me craving more and more and more. So, well, yes, he was abusive and uh, because he was mm. mentally sick, he was doing all these things out of his own uh, uh, issues. But I was also the one, you know, now if I look at it, I was the one who was taking it. So it's just that, uh, like I said, I think I quoted Dyer, uh, no matter how much I resent uh, or hate him, I am totally responsible for everything that happened. So yeah, these two points I wanted to share. Mm, lovely, lovely. It's, um, yeah, taking that personal responsibility and then making the changes. I mean, I, I want to make it clear because people always ask this and I go, hang on, no, 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 no. You didn't, you didn't cause the narcissism. You didn't create it. The person was probably like that before you met them. But yeah. what, what you do create is that you let them hang around you. Exactly. You don't, you don't cure, you can't cure the narcissist. You can't, you didn't create it. You can't cure it. But it's the fact that you allowed them into your orbit tells yeah. you that you're a matching component to someone with those issues, but it doesn't mean you're responsible for how they are. Yes. Yes. I mean, I still remember, I think I always quote my friend from London, a total stranger I met in a bar. And he said to me, I've, I've also quoted him before in my last interview, that if you let a narcissist affect you, you are the problem. Yes, I remember you said that. Wow, what profound words. Yeah, Woo! you have got to look, you know, uh, yeah. inside you. What is it that you, I mean, yeah. you are the one who's, I took, I suffered so much if I look back. I would take, you know, I would take medicines. I would take sleeping pills. Yes. Sleep away and I don't have to face that. Yeah. That silent yeah. treatment. I would just try to sleep those, escape those uh, situations. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so I think it's, it's, it's less about forgiving uh, them. It's more about forgiving yourself. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's, um, yeah, a lot of the grief and the grieving is about what did I do to myself? Yeah, yeah. Why and did it, I allow that? Why did I put myself in that situation? That's where I think the real grief is, is about what you did to yourself. It takes, it takes a lot of, it takes a lot of time, I think, to come out of it. And it takes like daily work. I, I still work every day. Uh, yeah. I think I for, and for this uh, resentment part, I try uh, doing Ho'oponopono because I think yep. that helps. I uh, do too. Yeah, and I do all the meditations because it's, it's, it, it has become a part of me now. I mean, yeah. I'm scared that if I stop, I'll slip back into the mm. same state. I know it's such a, um, it's just fun. It's like a natural high doing meditation because you let go if you've got any pain, any hurt, any anxiety. You can, you can work a little bit to let a bit of that out on that particular meditation. And some people do. You said you did how many meditations yesterday? You did a whole stack. Oh, yes. One after yeah. another because it was yeah. so cold. And I was locked up in my room. I did not even lift my window shade up. And I just <laughs> one meditation after another, after another, after another. I know. It's lovely. I've got one at the moment, Hamza, when I go to sleep and, and my partner's not here. Um, I put my phone on the little stand next to my bed. I go to YouTube and I put in crackling fire with howling wind and it's a meditation that's just that sound. Wow. And when I'm in winter, I love the sound of a crackling fire. And then if I want to do Ho'oponopono in my head over the top, so yeah. I've been listening. There's lots of crackling fire um, meditations on YouTube. And I went, wow, I didn't even know this existed. So I've been doing that lately and I love it because it's like you're cozy in your bed, you've got the heater on, it's nice and warm. And then you listen to the crackling fire and it's, um, I've just been playing around with that one and I'm really yeah. enjoying it. 
I I think it's also it, it, it's you you're right. It's fun. I mean, you have to you know just keep adding variety to your meditations. Like yeah. recently, I've got on uh, Wayne Dyer's meditations. Uh, so there's this, yeah. he has this morning meditation where he does this ah sound, and then he has some meditations for evening where it's Om sound. So it's it's good to add variety. Just you know, so you're not bored and it doesn't get redundant. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So Hamza, going into 2021, what have you got in your vision on the horizon? Have you got anything that you're moving towards, imagining, doing? What, what, are, you, what are you doing for that? Yeah, so the two, three things. Number one, I want to, I mean, strengthen, uh, deepen my self-love and, you know, come out of this getting from others uh, phase. Uh, that's something I'm working on. And hopefully 2021 will be much, much better. Yeah, and secondly, I'm trying to manifest a holiday. <laughs> yeah, also a new new relationship, and I'm I'm living in the end uh, for uh, yeah. that. So I'm actually enjoying it. So I think our next interview could be on that. Uh, how I yep. created a holiday and a new relationship by sticking Lovely. to living in the end. Beautiful. Yeah, living from it is such a huge thing it's it really is such a huge thing and and such a rewarding thing because it it takes you out of um, the problem and you feeling the negative emotion because you're focused on the problem I mean if you hop into you know like you and I talked about um, having the suitcase in your bedroom because you know you're going to travel. You and I are kind of both technically stuck to travel because yeah. of COVID at the moment. Yeah. But yeah. you and I discussed about having the suitcase where you can see it so it's ready and packed and then we imagine being at the airport at the place we both want to go to. So it's like as yeah. we talk about this, it makes it fun and that's living from it and that's enjoying the, yeah, we're going to travel and it's fun and yay and you know and you get into that uplifted vibe of it's happening living from it rather than oh my suitcase is still at the bottom of my bed I can't go anywhere yeah it's it's you split into a different direction with it and I think you you do get you do get hit by the outer world like I do still have my suitcase and I do all the work and I try to in the end but then when I hear from the agent oh there's no sign of visas relaxing you know there's no sign of lockdown uh, lifting so it's just how you deal with that uh, uh, reality I think like I, I think I mentioned at the start of what Dyer said that every time you hear something which is uh, uh, which obstructs or which is an obstacle to your manifestation just say to yourself that I refuse to accept this news and uh, this is probably an illusion you know? yeah and I yeah. think also diet says uh, I'm reading a lot of diet these days so I'm just quoting yeah he also says uh, it's on its way they, these are three powerful words that actually accelerate speed up your manifestations yeah so every time you have a doubt just say it is on its way it is on its way it is yeah nice 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 lovely it's so good to talk to you as always it's um it's just wonderful to have conversations about living from it what we're doing and 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 also not denying negative emotions that we feel because you know you can't just paste over the top of stuff yeah you got to deal with the emotions underneath you got to make time to let them out you got to grieve, you got to be angry, you got to run it out, punch it out, whatever. That's part of being human. And, and it's all right to have those, those emotions. I mean, we're not robots. We are, you know, the emotional guidance system is very much a part of who we are. Of course, so we are humans and I'm sure everybody who's manifesting, I think a specific person or the ex, they all experience this on a daily basis when they don't, don't see things working despite all yeah. the affirmations and all the meditations. So I think it's all about faith. It's about persistence. It and is. It's, it's also about uh, feeling good, you know, feel good state. I think that's number one. When you are in the feel good state, uh, you will have your manifestation. Just when yeah. you stop expecting it. For and sure. The more you try to seek it, the more you try to uh, chase it, uh, the more yeah. hard time it's going to get to give you. Yeah, yeah. You know, yesterday my brother sent me a... Uh, 
a photo of him and his family on Christmas Day. And of course, because he's got kids, they would have woken up at like 5 30, 6 o'clock in the morning. And my brother's like me, he's a night owl. So there's this family photo of my my brother, his family, the, the two kids and his wife looked lovely. My brother yeah. looked like a possum that had been knocked out of a tree with a stick. He, he's just yeah. such a night owl. Anyway, yeah. I saw that photo and because I remembered that he was like that when he was little, I started laughing and laughing. I had to lay down in bed for about a half an hour. I had laughed yeah. so hard looking at my brother. My yeah. eyes were stuck together from tears of laughter. And I thought, yeah. I haven't laughed that hard for a long time. And it's like throughout the day, I would look at this photo and I'd be in fits of laughter again. And then I messaged my brother and, and had a, you know, had a bit of a, a laugh at him because, you know, telling him about what I saw in the photo. And then he started laughing because, you know, he was obviously there and he knew how he felt. So it was that thing of, wow, I haven't laughed like that That's for right. such a long time. And, you know, yeah. it's those moments of, this has got nothing to do with manifesting. It's got nothing to do with anything. It's just a really funny, ridiculous, quirky moment where two siblings are laughing at each other, you know. Exactly. And, oh, it was just great. I thought, ah, oh, I want to do that more in 2021 because I haven't laughed like that where I can't even stand up. I'm so weak in the legs. I can't stand up. And, and I think that's when brilliant. you become like a magnet for all everything that you want to attract. I yeah. Mean, you're in that natural, happy state of joy. Total happy, total joy, total happiness. It was, oh, goodness. I'm going to go back and look at that photo again today because honestly, I got so much, so much joy and laughter out of, out of making fun of my little brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, because, very interesting. That's yeah. Very and I understand because we're both the same. We're both night people so being up at five or six is like offensive you know so oh, oh yeah. god what what fun what fun so anyway thank you for coming and joining me today we you are both you are in a cold you know you're in a winter climate so am I so it's good for us to get together and have a laugh and forget about the weather and the outside world and bring our joy and fun inside and do and have good conversations while we can't go to the, you know, well, we can't put a t-shirt on. We can't, yeah. you know, <laughs> enjoy that kind of weather, but we can certainly still have a laugh and have a good conversation. So thank you, Hamza. A lovely exchange. I look forward to doing more soon. Yes, for sure. For sure. Do you want to say bye to everybody, Hamza? Yeah. Um, so everybody, I, I want to wish you a very happy new year and may 2021 bring love, peace, and lots of health your way. Lovely. Thanks for joining us, everyone. And anything Hamza and I discussed, I will put the links down below for those of you that want to explore a bit further. Lots of love and I'll see you in the next YouTube.